Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be everything they want is everything they see. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So I'm going to jump right into it. The narcissist. What do they like? What do they want? It's virtually everything they see. Remember, the narcissist is an individual who jumps from relationship to relationship, person to person, business to business, town to town, always looking for the next new shiny object, which could, could be human beings, could be relationships, it could be status, it could be a car, it could be virtually anything. And the narcissist all also gets bored very easily. They need a new challenge. They need something to keep them going. They need a, the next new shiny object. So everything they want, it's everything they see. What that means is literally the narcissist, in, in the, on the channel frequently I use the term flavor of the month. That's what the narcissist, that's how they live their life. Could be flavor of the month, flavor of the week, the year, what, whatever the, the time frame is. But the narcissist, they always want more. And this appetite they have is insatiable. It cannot be quenched. It cannot, it can be satisfied for a brief period of time, which is called the euphoric slash love bomb stage, which I'll get into in a moment. But it can never be, it, it can't last because soon after the love bomb slash euphoric stage, remember, we go into the devaluation slash narcissistic fog stage. And it's there where the narcissist wants to trap you. They want to keep you working for them, working for the narcissist, working for the relationship, thinking that you will get back to that love bomb slash euphoric stage. Of course, we now know you never will. So let's go back again for a brief moment here. You have the love bomb slash euphoric stage. That's when you meet the narcissist and that's when you are the nice new shiny object. Perhaps you have a great job. Perhaps you have a lot of resources. Maybe, maybe you have your own business or you have a Mexican beach house or perhaps you have a great, uh, great social circle. Who knows what you have? It doesn't really matter. I'm explaining to you that you had something to offer and the narcissist saw this and what they wanted to do was to entrap you of, in their web of lies, manipulation, deceit, and destruction and to extract these resources from you or certainly to use the resources, whatever you had. The whole time they were doing this, they were looking to see how far, how deep you would fall in love with them or how deep, how much, how much you would give up. In other words, keep in mind again, in the very beginning of the narcissistic relationship, the narcissist wants you to fall in love with them. If it's a romantic relationship, they can't fall in love with you. They're incapable of love and they have zero empathy. What they want to do is they want to go to unsuspecting individuals who don't have the wisdom and don't have the education on the narcissistic abusive cycle and they want to extract from those individuals. Same thing with friendships and same thing with, with communities and same thing with business and all that. It, it's the same cycle. And then after they get you where they want you to be, in other words, after you've fallen for the mask and you believe in the mask and the false narrative of the mask, the narcissist, that's when they look for your replacement or another source of supply because the challenge is over for you. You've already, they've already conquested you. and They've already, They've already gotten you where they wanted you. The conquest is over is what I should have said. And now when this happens, that means the joy of the relationship, the challenge, which was you, it's over with. You're no longer the flavor of the month. What you are is you're now a puppet or a pawn to the narcissist. You are an individual who is giving to a fault, putting them perhaps high on the pedestal, and you are pumping them up to the detriment of your own existence. Again, in the narcissistic relationship, your mental health takes a hit, your physical health takes a hit, your spiritual health takes a hit. Everything, your financial, your bank account takes a huge hit. All these things, they are all to the detriment of you and they're all to enliven or enrich in the narcissist and their, their existence. That's how it works. So after the devaluation stage, remember, we know now that it's either, either the relationship it, how it ends is either you are discarded and or you wised up and you figured it out and you, you put an end to the relationship. And that's exactly how these two relation, that's how these relationships end. The third way is you stay in the narcissistic fog and you're just a lifelong puppet or pawn to the narcissist. And that's, that's where many, many layers of abuse take place because these individuals, they don't have the wisdom. They didn't get the wisdom because perhaps the internet wasn't around when they were in relationships. They didn't have the craving for the wisdom. They were in too deep. They fell in love 
there are so many reasons for that. But having said this, every, what the narcissist, what, what they want is, what they, is everything that they see. It's completely true. Think about this. Let's take a house, for example. The narcissist, think about the narcissist that you're thinking of right now. Did you guys buy a house together? Okay, was it good enough? Maybe for a little period of time, then perhaps what, what did the narcissist say? Oh, maybe we need a bigger house. When perhaps it was just the two of you and you had a house built for four, but now they wanted a house built for six. Why? Because it's the moving goalposts. It's to get you to jump through hoops and to get things that you don't even need or want, but they want them. Why? Because they got jaded and or bored with that house that you purchased, which is big enough for four people, but there's only two of you living in it. Same thing with a car. Let's say that you bought the narcissist a car. Okay, great. They're, they're very grateful for that for a couple days, aren't they? And then all of a sudden, that's just not quite good enough. It doesn't go as fast as I want it to, or the color is wrong, or the steering's off or something. And then you're like, really? I that spent a lot of money in the car. What's going on here? They want another car. And then keep in mind, the more the narcissist receives from you, your energy, your financial resources, your time, your empathy, the more they will extract from you. Because the abuse, the manipulation gets ramped up virtually each and every day, week, month, year when you're in these relationships. The narcissistic relationship, it has an expiration date. It, each and every one of them do. And it usually ends with a thud, a crash, a bang. It doesn't end in a proper way with two individuals sitting down, having a cup of coffee, discussing the relationship and moving on. Now, if you are discarded, drop comments below. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm not trying to trigger you. I'm letting you know these relationships are transactional. They're one-way relationships to Destructionsville. They are relationships that have to benefit one person, which isn't you. It's the narcissist, and they know this entering the relationship, and they try to extract as much from you as they can throughout the relationship until it ends and or until they find your replacement or replacements. Now, this is exactly how the cycle works. It goes on and on and on, and everything they want is everything they see. It's true. Think about it. Same thing with people. How many long-term relationships do these individuals have? Not many. How many stable, healthy relationships do they have? Romance or with siblings or with friends? Not many because most times people tolerate the narcissist and they will be friends with them. Let's say, use friendship as an example. And then they're hearing things about this person. What well, that can't be. That's not the person I know. And then lo and behold, they experience something, perhaps a rage fit or they hear the narcissist, narcissist gossiping or spreading the smear campaign. They're like, wait, I don't want any part of this. And perhaps they say something and boom, what happens? They're the next target or they're ostracized or they're out. It doesn't really matter how it happens. What, what matters is that you remove yourself from these toxic relationships and you are living your best life. You're insulating yourself with people that love you, respect you, that want to be with you and are, that can just be. They're not always looking to upgrade. And that's what the narcissist does. That's why they want everything that they see because they always are trying to upgrade. They're trying to upgrade relationships. They're trying to upgrade businesses. They're trying to upgrade their social status. They're trying to upgrade their houses, tangible assets. They're trying to upgrade virtually everything because they feel superior to you. They believe they're smarter than you. They believe they know more than you. Flip that coin around. Remember, the narcissistic relationship, it's a one-sided relationship. They also don't believe that they need to introspect or be accountable or apologize or say, I am sorry, I was wrong. I want to improve my fault. They, they can't do these things. And if they do, it's just with, it's a, it's, a, it's a slight, they don't mean it. Now the narcissist, they jump from person to person, like I mentioned frequently on the channel. It's because you were getting closer to discovering who they were, or perhaps you did discover it. And when you figured them out, or my hope is you're trying to figure them out or you already have and you're well on the healing path and you've gone no contact, blocked the narcissist, deleted them and all people associated with them, including flying monkeys. If that's the case, then you are on the path you are beginning to live your best life and you are moving forward and you're healing, of course. But you're learning, you're growing, you're teaching if you can. But having said these things, what, what happens, why the narcissist, everything they want is everything they see, it's so true. Because they can't just ever be satiated or happy. Here's a very basic example. You get a brand new smartphone, whatever brand it is, you have it. And the narcissist sees this. What do they need? Well, they need the same smartphone or they need to get one better than what you have. Why? Because everything's a competition with the narcissist every single thing. Remember, for the narcissist, life is a game that they must win. Life isn't to be experienced and relished and enjoyed and embraced and, and just cherished, no. The narcissist believes that they need to get one over on people, that they need to have more things at the end of this thing called life than people, that they can bully their way through life and not even 
look back and realize the damage and the destruction they've created throughout past relationships. That's how the narcissist is. So they want everything they see. It's true. Think about it. Maybe the examples you're thinking of right now, maybe they weren't with cars or houses. Maybe they were. Maybe they were with vacations. In other words, their neighbors vacationed in Maui and now the narcissist, that's not good enough. I need to go to Egypt or wherever. What, you, know, you get my point. They're always trying to one-up people and they're always trying to act as if they, they feel entitled. Let's put it that way. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. Have a great, great day. Remember, everything the narcissist sees is everything that they want. Uh, it's true. They want things. They want to collect things. Think about it. Think about many narcissists are hoarders. Many narcissists collect people and they take them off the shelves and dust them off when they try to attempt a hoover and put them back on their place. Think about this. There are so many different layers to this thing called narcissism. The onion needs to get peeled back thousands upon tens of thousands of layers. But for this video, just to let you know, they will always be wanting more than they have. They can't just be satiated or satisfied. It always has to be something else. Let's take a smaller example. Airlines, you're flying in coach and then are, they fly with you at the very first time. Say it's a French or romance, romantic relationship. They're flying, you're flying coach. Okay, that's great. Well, you get to your destination, you have a good time. Probably experienced a rage fit or something, but you, you're learning about narcissism. The next time you go away with them, coach isn't good enough. You need business. Are you kidding me? You upgrade to business, you spend a lot more money. Same thing happens, you go on the destination, vacation's ruined most likely, you come back the third time, because you're learning. Wait, let's go first class, it's only a little bit more than business. Well, wait a minute, the first trip we took was coach, and it cost the cheapest amount. The second one, we upgraded business, which is a pretty big jump. Now you're saying first class? You see what I mean? They always want more. So guys, that's it. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. Have a great afternoon, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye guys.